Welcome to a botanical wonderland, gardens by the bay. Nature's beauty, human ingenuity and art collide in a spectacular symphony that will stimulate every sense. We will immerse ourselves in the avatar experience, experience the flower dome, walk the skyway, marvel at the sculptures and chill out in the lush gardens. Join us. Good day and welcome back to the vlog and today we're going to Gardens by the Bay approaching it from a westerly direction and the first thing that we come across is this Moongate sculpture which is a tribute to the series Stargate that I used to watch moving a bit further forward we come across another lovely sculpture in the clouds I'm already looking forward to what other sculptures I'm going to find on my travels and then we see the iconic towers that the Gardens of the Bay is known for. And I'm going to get over there eventually, but I want to take in some of the sights around here first. Because of its proximity, the Marina Bay Sands Hotel stands prominent wherever you are in the Gardens of the Bay. isn't long before we come across one of those iconic sculptures. This one's the Paparazzi Rabbit Woman and Dog Man by Gillian Marks. One of a number that are in the gardens of the bay. Around the corner we have what must be the longest sculpture that I've ever seen. It's called Love the Last March and it's another Gillian Marks impactful creation. Basically it is looking at endangered species and each of the animals that make up the length of this sculpture is given a human name and a backstory. And at the base of that animal, you will find a QR code which leads us to different web pages that tell us a little bit about these majestic creatures and also about the backstory that is actually detailed on the statue itself. I'm in the canopy which is between the flower dome and the cloud forest and I'm looking to buy some tickets to visit both of these. And a ticket for both exhibitions was about £35. Also going to buy my ticket to the Skywalk but because it was inclemental weather the ticket attendant suggested that was probably not a good idea. On the corner of the canopy there is an art display and each of these artworks has been made out of recycled so plastic bags, PPT bottle tops, tin boxes, denim. Incredible the level of detail that's been achieved. It's downstairs to go to the cloud forest where there is the avatar experience. When you get down to that lower level, there's a lovely set of wooden sculptures that surround you. And entrance into the cloud forest is through these two sets of automatic doors. You are then greeted by this incredible sight of a massive waterfall and a mountain banshee from the Avatar series. This is an, a massive immersive walkthrough which is being inspired by the beauty and the story of Avatar and it's been created by Neon Global in collaboration with Disney Location Based Experiences and Lightstorm Entertainment and this is its first global location. We will be travelling through the alien world of Pandora witnessing the bioluminescent environment and engaging with mystical creatures and flora. This is Kew Garden on steroids meeting Disney. The 
so the cloud forest recreates the environments that you would have found in some of the mountainous terrains of South East Asia and Central Southern America. This combines sculptures and plants in a unique way to portray the unique environment of Pandora. In the middle of it is a 42 meter cloud mountain we will be ascending that shortly. You ascend via a series of escalators, circular paths that intertwine around the waterfall that we saw on our way in and provide a unique perspective of the cloud forest itself. A variety of themed areas as you go around the cloud forest. This one allows you to see your own avatar. Cloud Forest and I am starting my journey up to what is called the Lost World. It's quite interesting here how they mix uh, basically like real life vegetation with characters from Avatar. One of the nice things is that as you ascend the cloud forest and the mountain you get a load of different views around the bay of all of the famous landmarks which is another dimension that I hadn't really expected. Now I'm not too good with heights and it is incredibly high up here but actually I didn't find it too bad. It, the, the paths are actually well controlled, there aren't people pushing and shoving and they're fairly sturdy construction so I, I didn't really feel too queasy. I love the way as you walk around you get glimpses of one of the sections and yet uh, the, the path guides you slightly in a different direction. And at this point we're now coming up behind the waterfall and looking down on the front entrance and uh, seeing a different perspective of that brilliant waterfall. If you've ever wanted to fly your own Banshee, then you have the opportunity to control one on a virtual screen. then it's down the escalators to pick up on that 
animated Banshee that we saw previously and crikey is this lifelike. It blinks, it flaps, it screeches, it squeals, it looks around. You will be forgiven for thinking that it was real. And then you're in another section where you can meet the latest animal in the Avatar series, the Elu, and see it in its natural habitat. It's then on to the next section, which you get through a tunnel of blue lights before you arrive in a room which features scenes from the Avatar film combined with interactive light show which is projected onto the floor and the walls that interacts with the actions and the movements that you make. It's a truly magical environment. And then it's out of the Cloud Mountain via the Secret Garden. And in true Disney style, you exit the cloud forest into the ubiquitous gift shop. And this one featured many of the normal items such as avatar characters, items of clothing, pendants, books and cards. And the exit from the gift shop was into the lower levels that we come into the cloud forest and then it was up the escalator and back into the canopy section. So the ticket that I had purchased allowed me both into the cloud forest and into the flower dome. So it's over to the flower dome and see what we've got in here. And automated doors lead you into a short tunnel before you get to the second set of automated doors that leads you into the flower dome itself. So the flat dome is also split into a number of sections and it has a garden representing various areas or nationalities. So for example the first garden that we came across was the Australian garden. It's actually on three levels though the third level is actually quite small and contains a USA garden. Uh, the second level is the one that you enter in on and has a wide variety of different gardens and themings and then the lower level seems to be dedicated to 
at the moment a Christmas display due to the time of the year that we, we went. So each garden has a collection of the plants that would be seen in that area or country and also there is quite often a sculpture that represents something that one would associate with that area. Flower Dome is 1.2 hectares and is listed in the Guinness Book of Records as being the largest greenhouse in the world. interesting to wander around and take in the various regional differences and the way that we treat gardens in each of the areas and countries that are illustrated. These stairs lead up to the third level, which isn't a USA garden as I thought before, it's a Californian garden, uh, but it's a really small area, uh, gives you some good views over the bay though. And I even found a UK garden there, featuring Winnie the Pooh characters. There's a real good mix of different types of plants and some quite large specimens including some trees that you see here. It's, it's a really nice place just to have a, a, a wander, uh, get away from the heat and see what's there. The ground floor section seemed to be largely themed around Santa Claus and Father Christmas. I don't know if that was just because of the time of year that we've gone, which was around November time, or whether or not it was a permanent feature. I imagine it's a, a variable feature depending upon the season or depending upon what's going on. If anyone knows, please let us know in the comments below.
it from the flag dome was through a couple of sets of automated doors and it led you back out into the same gift shop that we had exited the avatar experience so it's back up the escalator so the plan now is to do a bit more exploring of the gardens by the bay and see what else is here um, but first of all I think I need to get myself a drink and there was a local cafe there, the Shake Shack, that uh, I went in to get it. So around Gardens by the Bay there are a number of themed gardens and we are just about to enter the first of those which is the Chinese Garden. Now this is all entirely free, there is no cost and you can wander around to your heart's content. This garden is surrounded by walls that contain the garden, but within the garden complex as well as the vegetation and sculptures you also have water garden. And then leading away from the garden itself down this set of steps there's a lovely water feature that takes you down to other parts of the gardens by the bay. We are on the South Bay section of Gardens by the Bay. Uh, Garden by the Bay was built on reclaimed land and surrounding the South Bay part of the garden is a moat which you can see here. We are now at another of the heritage gardens. This one is the Indian Garden and follows a similar approach to the Chinese garden that we visited previously in that it combines both plants that would have been indigenous to India together with sculptures and water in an enclosed space.
So the super tree grove is in front of me and it sort of beckons. The weather's quite fine, it's not windy, no rain, no thunder certainly. So I think I'm going to have a try and go up it and see what I can uh, experience. seemed to take quite a long time to get up to the Skyway, much longer than I'd expected. And the views that you get over Singapore and Marina Bay are absolutely incredible in every single direction. There is something different to look at. Well, I've now made it up to the top of the sky wall and you get a really clear view from up here of both the gardens by the bay and all of the surrounding landscape. It's really absolutely fascinating, really enjoyable. Didn't think I'd get up here actually because I'm not too good with heights. Uh, sort of one of the issues of my hearing uh, loss was that it made me uh, a, a bit uh, suspect with heights. But this is quite a steady platform and the views are incredible which sort of takes your mind off of anything else. And at the exit, there's a really healthy, helpful sign. The outdoor spaces at Gardens by the Bay are also truly incredible and it's fantastic to think that these are entirely free and use reclaimed land in order to make best use of it and provide a unique tourist attraction for the city.
picture is called Planet and it's white painted bronze with some stainless steel and it floats somewhat heavenly above the actual surface of the grass. Sculpture is called Fiori, meaning flower. incredible tiger is called the Trashaw Tiger. It's made entirely of trash collected from around Singapore. Absolutely fantastic. Gardens by the Bay is a wonderful experience, one that we would highly recommend that anyone visiting Singapore takes. It's unique, you don't necessarily have to pay. If you come back in the evening, there's a superb light show. Unfortunately, we didn't have the time to undertake that, but uh, our day spent here was absolutely fantastic. Really nice time.